In this video, we will learn how to use the rule editor to create custom business rules to manage the flow and execution of your data integration. Business rules are typically used inside of a business process so that users can edit graphical representations of important data decisions. For example, suppose you are using InterSystems Iris to monitor the inflow of data from a camera on a red light that captures violations. Data comes into the InterSystems Iris integration through real-time red light violation business service and is sent to the demo.ticket BPL business process to determine if the offending driver should receive a ticket or if this data should just be sent directly to the archive. This process identifies whitelisted vehicles, such as emergency vehicles, and only calls the two-ticket application business operation when a vehicle is not whitelisted. Let's look at how this works. Inside of the business process, there's a rule action that checks the car type field. If the rule matches an emergency vehicle type, it returns 1 to indicate that the vehicle is whitelisted. The business process stores the result of that rule, a 1 or a 0, in a context property, in this case, context.whitelisted. The location that stores the result of a rule is set in the results location field of the rule activity settings in the business process. Now we will need to update this rule. It turns out that this municipality often has parades and political demonstrations in the streets. Drivers in these processions are authorized to run red lights only during the events. We will need to update the business process to check violations against a table of whitelisted civilians and only send out violation tickets if they occurred outside the whitelisted time frame of the procession. The first step is to edit the business process context. Business rules can only access data that has been explicitly brought into this context and cannot have direct access to the request message. In order to enable our rule to compare violation records to whitelisted civilians, we will need to assign these records to variables local to the business process. The values we will need are the date and the time of violation, the license plate number, the date, if any, that the vehicle is whitelisted, as well as the start and end time of the parade. We will then need to assign the values from the business process request to these context variables using the assign action. The whitelisted records depend upon a table lookup, so we will need to create a SQL query action to look into the database for a record. The process queries a table called demo.civWhitelist that stores records of the license plates of all whitelisted civilians, along with the time of their grace period. The business process will find any record of a whitelisted vehicle that matches the license plate of the violation. Column values returned from a SQL query can be directly assigned to a context variable by using the into colon context dot variable name syntax. Now that we have assigned all necessary variables, we are ready to open the rule editor and add the new rule to the rule set. We can add elements by clicking the green plus button. In this case, we'll add a rule and call it check civilian whitelist. Next, we will add a when condition under the rule. Our first condition will check to see if the SQL query is empty. We can do this by checking if any field updated by that query, such as WL date, is equal to an empty string. If the lookup found no records of a whitelist, we do not have any more decisions to make. We can create a return element that returns zero to indicate that the violation is not whitelisted. Using return ends the execution of the rule set and stops any further rules from being evaluated. Next, we will create a second when condition to check if the violation took place on the day that the vehicle was whitelisted. We can double click the condition field to open up the expression editor, a tool that makes it easier to compose complicated expressions by making them graphical. We can start our expression by clicking operations, which lists all comparison operators and selecting equal sign as we are testing for equality. Because our dates are recorded in string format, we'll have to convert them to a date object before comparing them. We can use the expression editor's built-in functions to do this by clicking the function button and selecting convert date time. We will then put date in the value field and leave the rest blank. We will do the same for the whitelisted date. Next, we will create an AND statement that will only be evaluated if the date comparison rule evaluates to true. In other words, we will check if the date of the violation was whitelisted, then check if it was within the approved time frame. 
Selecting the AND element in the expression editor that we just created, we will click the Operations button again. We will need to check if the violation occurred after the whitelisted start time, but before the end time. After all, the offender could have run the red light on his or her way back from the parade. First, we will check if the violation time is greater than or equal to the start time of the grace period. Then we will check if it is less than or equal to the end time. If both of these conditions are met, we will return 1 to the business process to indicate that the vehicle was whitelisted at the time of the violation. This allows the business process to then use this information to call the two-ticket operation, or to merely pass the record onto the archive. In this video, you learned how to create business rules using the Rule Editor. For more information on using the Rule Editor, we recommend visiting documentation.